Catholics that are watching will be disillusioned. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to introduce the officials for this event. Vrchmiros Moshi, representing the International Skating Union, please welcome the referee of the event, Ms. Bendy Ensman. Welcome to Strava for the second event on the International Skating Union's Junior Grand Prix Series. Last week in Courchevel, we enjoyed watching the men, the women, and the ice dance, and now here in Strava, the pairs will take to the ice too. 106 different entrants from 32 different skating nations will compete, and up first will be the men's short program. Welcome to Astrava and Czech Skate 2022. Here, this incredible arena, the Ostravar Arena, opened in 1986 and home to so many brilliant events in the past, including the European Figure Skating Championships just five years ago. Now, it will be home to some of the best junior skaters in the world as we look ahead to this, this second event on the International Skating Union's Junior Grand Prix Series. We've seen some brilliant skating in practice and we're excited to see what will happen today in this first of three events, three days of competition in this amazing venue. We will start with the men's short program as we look to see the judging panel. 
Over the course of the four disciplines, 27 judges from 20 different skating nations will officiate, cast their trained eyes on the skating we'll get to enjoy. My name is Mark Henretti and I will be commentating through the event and we would love to hear from you on the International Skating Union social media channels and on the ISU Junior Grand Prix YouTube channel as well. So many of you joined in with us in Courchevel, France last week and it was wonderful to hear from skating fans around the world, both those trained in our sport and those new spectators and fans. as the first group of five men take to the ice to warm up. So we can check in and hear from some of you who have sent in questions. Some of you on the International Skating Union's Instagram page have sent in various different questions. And the first from at Liam Mort. Why is the Junior Grand Prix at so many different locations instead of just one? And an application process has to be made to the ISU to host one of these prestigious events. And following the different applications, the International Skating Union will decide upon which events take place. And we're really treated to some incredible locations and incredible venues. The Ostravar Arena has over 9,900 seats in this, the main arena. It's a twin pad facility, and skaters will have had the chance to train in this incredible competition venue and also in the practice rink. Currently, the women are on the practice rink ahead of their short program later today. We start with the men and then we head to the pair short program with the women's short being the final event of the day. Back to the social media channels and at friend.symbol asks, can I watch it on TV in the United States of America? We can all tune in to all of the coverage of all four disciplines on the International Skating Union's Junior Grand Prix YouTube channel. And the entire team working hard behind the scenes to provide the best coverage and showcase these amazing young talents. From Elia, nor, nor, why are the age restrictions different for different disciplines and genders? So that's pertaining to the older age restriction for the men in the pairs and the dance categories. And the understanding being that the maturity level is different at different stages and for the incredible physical demands for the pair skaters and the dancers, it's advised that the men a little bit longer in the junior ranks and they can compete a junior up to the age of 21. The cutoff for the skaters is the 1st of July. So a skater with a birthday after that, a little bit fortunate in being able to secure another year on the junior circuit. And this year, the International Skating Union have changed the criteria for eligibility into the senior ranks with the minimum age increasing over the next three seasons. And so the result will be that we may get to see and enjoy some of these competitors staying in the junior ranks for longer, an opportunity for us to see their development over more seasons. So this week, the amazing Ted Barton is busy hosting events in Canada. And we will be treated to his return next week on the next stage of the Junior Grand Prix in Riga in Latvia. I'm sure I speak for all in thanking Ted for his amazing coverage of the Junior Grand Prix for so many seasons now. He's really offered a platform and opportunity for these 
young talents to be showcased and chance for us to start to connect with some of the athletes who will hopefully go on to become some of the stars of the sport at the senior level as well. And this season, particularly exciting because it's the beginning of a new Olympic cycle. And some of these athletes that we'll get to watch over the next three days will have their sights set on the Milano Torino Olympics in 2026. The Beijing Olympics. Success for so many of the coaches who will also be here in the venue. We've seen some of the most prestigious names in the sport from the coaching world. And their next raft of stars coming through on the Junior Grand Prix stage as well. So as we get into the closing seconds of this warm up, great to see smiles on the faces of the skaters. It'll be a big moment for Mati Klesa from the Czech Republic. He's in his first Junior Grand Prix event in his home nation. Amazing opportunity and experience for Matej Klasal. Originally from Prague here, opening proceedings. Well done to Mati Klesa from the Czech Republic. 
huge opportunity and huge experience for this young 14-year-old. He benefiting from competing in his home nation, originally from Prague. And that's where he trains throughout the year. A huge responsibility, really, for the youngster to open this event of 21 men competing. As he takes his way to the kiss and cry to receive his scores. So the technical panel will be looking at the seven different elements. There will be reviews made to ascertain the level formatted. That, the opening double axle, the best of the three jumping passes as he moves now to his combination. Comparatively, an easier technical difficulty than that which we'll see from some others on that triple circle double toe. And this looks like it's still in its developmental stage on the triple loop. But this was good. Stop. Wait a minute. And this season, the judges have slightly different criteria for judging the component scores. And the choreography has to reflect the musical phrase and form. So stop. Wait a minute. Definitely appropriate in regards to the musicality. And I'm sure being here this week, seeing some of the amazing talent that some much more experienced competitors on the Junior Grand Prix circuit has been an incredible eye-opener for Matei that he will use to fuel his training moving forward. And I think quite a character choosing the Bruno Mars Uptown Funk music, that in itself, a brave and bold choice and an insight into the character that he is. So as his skating skills develop over the seasons ahead, I'm sure we'll be treated to more entertainment from Matei Klesal. Matei has earned in the short program 32.86. 32.86 starts the event for Matei. Next to Spain, representing Switzerland, Georgi Pavlov, Schlitzko. Yogi Pavlov from Switzerland, he too in his first Junior Grand Prix experience.
solid skate for Georgi Pavlov from Switzerland. Again, another skater in their first Junior Grand Prix experience and rising to the challenge brilliantly. Opening with that triple it's triple toe, showcasing an increased technical difficulty from Matei, the Czech skater who started this men's short program. Jorge is greeted by his coach to a handshake. Job well done for the Swiss skater. And last week we saw Noah Bodenstein from Switzerland also performing brilliantly in the men's short. So a sign of talent coming through and good competition for Swiss men's skating. This was the opening triple loops, triple toe. A quarter rotation short on both parts of that jump combination, just dropping the grade of execution from the judges, but no such mm, no such issues with the triple loop. And then Georgi sized up the double axle, thinking long and hard, wanted to make sure that this, the final jumping pass, was solid, and that it was. Coach Jorge Schipper, he himself won a Grand Prix medal in 2005, so lots of experience to draw upon from Coach as they eagerly await the scores now. And as with all the skaters, wonderful opportunity here, and a good coach will be trying to maximize all the learning potential from both the practice through the week leading up to this event and obviously the skate itself as well. Looks like Jorge has lots to say about what happened. Disperse, please. Jorge has earned in the short program 49.45 points. 49.45 for the Swiss skater Jorge Pavlov. He moves into first place at this stage. Next to Spain, representing Japan, Haru Takeuchi, Yabotsuko. Third skater in the group and the third on their first Junior Grand Prix stage, Haru Takeuchi from Japan.
Wonderful to see that reaction to a clean skate for Haru Kakiuchi from Japan. Few things as lovely for fans of this sport than to see a skater deliver their personal best. And Kakiuchi was third in the Gensen Summer, Cup, Summer Cup mid August. And that offering the Japanese Skating Federation an indication of his readiness for this Junior Grand Prix season giving him the chance to compete here in the Czech Republic. Such strength and depth of talent in Japanese skating. So to be able to represent his nation must be a huge honor for Kakiuchi. Skating to the popular Libor Tango by Astor Piazzolla. And looking like he was committed to the interpretation as we look at the opening element the triple loop no question on the rotation and good running edge on the back of that jump this the combination triple loops into triple toe loop cleanly done technical panel will be satisfied and the judges will decide upon the grade of execution of the element as we see performing right up until the step forwards into this the double axle And this, the butterfly entry into his flying camel. And this, the only element to have a negative grade of execution, and that probably due to the lack of speed within the camel features. I think he was going for eight rotations in this camel catch spin position. And as he clung on to get the feature and increase the level, I'm not sure if that was maintained, but drop the speed as well a little bit but the highlight for me was the reaction to the clean skate great scenes and Haru training mate with Nozomi Yoshioka who is also here in the Czech Republic who we'll see competing later in the men's event and the Japanese men looking to continue the success from Shunsuk Nakamura, who won the first Junior Grand Prix event in Courchevel in France last week. And many of these athletes trying to secure points to compete in the Junior Grand Prix final in December. So a comfortable lead at this stage for Haru Kakiuchi from Japan. Next to Spade, representing Canada. Alex uh, Rakic, Canada. Alex Rakic from Canada, coached by Joanne McLeod, and he, the first skater with a planned program content, including the triple axel.
Well, beautiful music and beautiful skating. Oh. Halo by Peter Katz. The soundtrack for Alexei Rekic's short program from Canada. I'm sure he'll be a little frustrated with the double three turns that followed to the jumps as he's greeted by Joanne McLeod. You can see slight frustration, I'm sure, but on the whole, really beautiful skating. And he comes into this event fresh from success at a competition in Vancouver last week where he landed the triple axle there and quad toe, which we can hopefully look forward to seeing in his free skate. But some real good musical sensitivity and timing from the 17-year-old Canadian. As we see the triple flip, triple toe combination. And this stepping up into the triple axle, the highest level of technical difficulty that we'll see in the men's short. He had to double three and touch the foot down, thus lowering the grade of execution. But spins were great, as you see him pulling for the camel spin feature, the donut position. And here, the clear change of edge, that one of the features that's required now, one of the new features that must be included for the skaters aiming to get level four, changing direction, multi-directional skating as he steps up into the triple loop, showcasing good choreographic content, managed to keep the foot off the ice on the landing there, but still forcing the judges to go down on the grade of execution. Really good use of the new spin features required this year. You can see that the windmill feature here. Not sure if that will have been counted based upon the requirements of the range in the movement. But committed to the presentation throughout. Three years ago, Alex was Second at the Junior Grand Prix in Courchevel back in 2019. So he's obviously displayed talent for some years now and great to see him on form in this event. Let's hope that he's not out of contention going into the free skate. Sixty-five point three three for the Canadian. He goes into first place. On the ice, representing Israel, Jakob Pogrebinski. Jakob Pogrebinski from Israel, 17 year old, skating to music by Hans Zimmer.
Now, perhaps this gate that Jakob Pogrebinski from Israel was hoping for, that mistake on the triple flip prevented him from having a jump combination, and that will be costly to his total score. That said, commitment to the interpretation Definitely giving expressiveness and projection to the music from Black Smoke from the Angels and Demons soundtrack by Hans Zimmer. Last week we saw Leonid Gietzelman and Kurshevel from Israel too. And in the news that Alexei Baichenko, long-standing representative for Israel in the men's event in the senior ranks, has retired. These young skaters looking to step up. As you just see, the double three turn disguising that little mistake there well. There they fall on the flip, a lot of the blade touching down on the takeoff to that, so not the optimal jump technique that he wants. But here, inset into the expressiveness that he had, right through to the fingertips before he steps up into the best jump of the program, the double axle. Good running edge on the landing of that, forcing that to be a positive grade of execution. And that jump, because that's in later part of the program, that carries a higher Base value, 10% increase in the value of the jump when later in the program, as we see now. The combination spin, all three spins for Yakov coming in at level three. And last year, Yakov competed in both of the Junior Grand Prix events held in Courchevel. So he comes into this event with some experience in knowing what to expect. And although he'll be disappointed with the short program here, hoping that he can turn that around for the free skate. This first, please. Jakob has earned in the short program 43.19. 0.19 for Yakov Pogrebinski from Israel. And that. Concluding the first group of men in this men's short program. So as we watch the next group of five men take to the ice for the men's short program, taking a chance to check in online and see what's been happening on the International Skating Union's social media channels and on the comments on the YouTube channel as well. Please send us your questions. You can use the hashtag JGP figure and we get the chance to connect with the fans around the world. We've had a question in about how do you organize the order the skaters will participate in from at Life Fair Bar. And there will be an official draw for the skaters on the junior events heading into their short program or the rhythm dance. So skaters will pick a number completely at random and that will dictate the starting order for the short program and then it's really easy to know the starting order for the free skate. That's in a reverse order from the result of the short program. So whoever wins this men's short program here today on Ostrava will skate last in the free skate event. So completely random order for the short program. And that's what's exciting. We get to see diverse abilities and confidences coming in to the event. As we see the skaters warming up the jump combinations, the jump combination, arguably the biggest stressor for the men. Some of the men in this event attempting triple axle as well. And indeed, in this group, we have two of the men using that in their planned program content. So the first to skate, Nikolai Memola from Italy. 
intends to open his campaign with the triple axel. Triple axel worth big eight points, which will be sizable in dictating the result of this men's event. And then still on Instagram, questions coming in from at Milai out. What is your favorite thing about getting to commentate on the Junior Grand Prix? Well, certainly for me, last week being in Courchevel in France, getting to sit alongside Ted Barton was a delight. Ted Barton has been the lead commentator and the sole commentator for the Junior Grand Prix series for the last seven years before this. And he has done a magnificent job in representing these young athletes. And a real pleasure and privilege for me to get to work alongside him and learn from his experience and wisdom as Nikolai Mamola offers a beautiful triple axel. And Ted, very busy man. He is currently working hard for Skate Canada and he'll be joining remotely from his home in Canada in Vancouver for the event in Riga next week. So we can all look forward to his return when we'll be together. Another absolute highlight to this Junior Grand Prix series is just seeing the development of these athletes. I've had the good fortune of commentating on lots of senior events, and it's exciting to see some of these skaters knowing that they too will soon be the poster skaters for our beautiful sport. So last week, and indeed this week, we've been treated to seeing skaters from lots of different nations. This week in Ostrava, 32 different skating nations represented here. And that testament to the work the International Skating Union has done to popularize our sport across the globe. And then from at Charlotte A. Schultz, predictions for the upcoming season. Well, it would be wonderful to hear predictions some of you have online and favorite skater for the upcoming season. Oof. I think what's so exciting this year, being at the start of a new Olympic cycle, we're getting to see new faces and the opportunity for some new names to step up and take favorite position for fans around the world and it was great to see as we see the difficult exit there with the cartwheel great to see some new names and not necessarily even names of those that won in Courchevel in France last week Michael Shea from America went down as a real popular candidate on YouTube so many people enjoying his short program and you can check that out on the ISU Junior Grand Prix YouTube channel Videos from last week's event still available to watch and enjoy. As we head into the last minute of the warm up. And it will be the Italian who will start this second group of men. Twenty one men in the event concluding with Sweden's Andreas Norback, who will be the last skater to take to the ice. It's an incredible venue. And like last week in France, great ice quality as well. Nikolai Mamola slaps his quads in anticipation of his short program. He's looked wonderful in practice here in Ostrava. And you can see him now just preparing for the opening element, his triple axel. Music by Sergei Rachmaninoff.
Beautifully elegant skating from Nikolai Memola. The tallest skater that we've seen so far and using his long limbs to make beautiful shapes across the ice. Really elegant in his style and in his carriage. Not the triple axel that was so positive in the warm up. But his quality evident even with that mistake. And Italian men's skating has been so successful of late. With Grazel and Matteo Rizzo performing brilliantly at the Worlds in Montpellier. And Nicolai Mamola here looking like he is ready to step up into senior ranks. This was beautiful. The double outside three turn perfectly timed with the Rachmaninoff music. And there you see a rocker counter change edge, difficult transition, stepping up into the triple axle and just off axis in the air, forcing the step out and the touchdown. And again, another difficult entry. You can see as he goes into this, the triple loop, which wasn't comfortable looking off axis again in the air, but testament to his training, managing to stay comfortably on that back outside edge. You can see here in the landing of this loop, just a little chain deviation on the edge. And again, off axis slightly on the triple toe, but well-trained, well-rehearsed to be able to secure the landings. And as we look at the spins, different features, all of the skaters competing will be eager to secure a level four, the maximum level possible in their spins and that his difficult exit so his classical style suited the Rachmaninoff piece tomorrow in his free skate he'll skate to Sanson so really playing to his strengths for the Italian just off the medals at the Grand Prix that he competed in in Linz last year. In fourth place, looking to be in contention for a medal for Nikolai Memola. And a comfortable lead at this stage, six points ahead of the Canadian for Nikolai Memola from Italy. On the ice, representing Czech Republic, the second skater to represent the Czech Republic and another 14-year-old. Big opportunity for Wojtek Warish.
And you can hear the reaction from the home crowd. And hopefully Wojtek has lots of friends and family here to support him. He trains in Ostrava. So amazing for him to get to perform here in this incredible arena and a smile on his face now. And I'm sure he knows that he's not competing for medals at this event, but he's here to soak up all that this competition offers him in terms of experience and opportunity. Skating, obviously, to the James Bond theme and Judge is looking to see that his movement reflects that style as you see him preparing for this, the triple loop. And he was cautious, trailed the free foot on the three turn a little bit, cautious on entry, but no need to be. Good quality jump. This was unfortunate. Loads of length and ice coverage through the three turn into this triple saco. Just hesitant and late and sticking that landing. But did well after that disappointment, didn't let the Enormity of the occasion, skating an international skating union event, <clears throat> deter him as he stepped up into his double axle. Now we see some of the footwork, step sequence, one of the mandatory required elements there is a back outside loop turn, changing direction with the toe steps. And that element coming in at level two for Votek. So there's an event within an event, and I'm sure Wojtek will be looking at Matej's score. The first skater that took the dice, Matej Klesa from the Czech Republic, scored 32.86 points. So it remains to be seen as to whether Wojtek has done enough to be the top-ranked Czech skater at this junction in the event. And I'm sure Wojtek works hard on some of the more difficult triple jumps. His technical plan program content has a lower base value than that which we've seen from the likes of Memola and Rakic, who are in first and second at the moment. This course, please. Votek scores 33.53 points. And just ahead of his compatriot, Matej Klesal. Next to Spain, representing Slovakia, Lukáš Václavý, Slovensko. Lukáš Václavík urged to take a deep breath as he takes to the ice by his coach. The 15-year-old skates to Shape of My Heart by Sting.
Emotional connection with the music right to the end for the Slovakian skater. And to me, possibly the fastest skater that we have seen across the ice so far at this point in the competition. Judges looking for flow, power and speed within the skating skills. The third of the three program component scores that judges will reward. And he looks disappointed with himself, which is testament to the high expectations and standards that he holds himself to. And I think very much a, a star in the future. You can see there, expressive at the beginning as well. And here covering lots of ice as he steps up into the triple axle. And again, plenty of power through triple loops, electing to do triple loops double toe loop combination keeping a good grade of execution. This highlight for me here, you can see his coach in the background, living the spin features with him. And the coaches are so invested in their students, so desperately eager for them to succeed and showcase all their hard work. And a nod of the head implies that the coach was indeed satisfied. More cautious and hesitant into the final jump, the triple loop. And there, no running edge on the back of that. Mandatory deductions there in the grade of execution. And you can see Lucas just going through the elements there, checking off, trying to guesstimate perhaps what kind of score he can look forward to receiving. His personal best was from the Junior Grand Prix in Slovenia last year with 59.10 scored there in the short program last September. And he's definitely showcased improvements in both his program component scores and his technical element score. Just maybe not delivered as well as he's capable of today. Tomorrow he will skate to Malaguena. Brilliant piece of music. Lugas has earned in the short program 59.89 points, which brings him So a new ISU personal best for Lucas. And he goes into fourth place. On the ice, representing Czech Republic, Daniel Malti, Czech Republic. The third and final competitor from the Czech Republic and the oldest of the three, but just 15 years of age. Damien Malchik will skate to the music Wild Side.
Tough ski for Damien Maastricht from the Czech Republic. He comes into this event with a short program personal best score of 52.88. And indeed, he trains here in Ostrava through the high season. Splits his training time in the low season between here and Los Angeles. So exposes himself to different standards, but you can see his coach Nella shakes her head. Frustration, I am sure. And he came into this short program with an easier technical element content, just the triple toe, double toe as the jump combination compared to some of the triple triples that we've seen from others. But last week in Courchevel, we saw French skater Jean Medard using that same content to come seventh in the short program with a big 56.81, but that was dependent upon a clean skate. And unfortunately, that didn't happen today for Damien. Opening content was good. Got lots of personality, good skating skills. And this, that jump combination that I mentioned, triple toe, double toe, good technique. Judges looking for a very good height and very good length of all parts of the jump combo. But this is where things unraveled a little bit. The triple loop, don't think he got full rotation on this, didn't get the pop or the elevation that he is used to. And that fall requires a mandatory one point deduction. But clung on to the double axle. Here, the, I think this was the change set spin. And then the spins again, judges just looking to see good speed or acceleration during the spin, good controlled, clear positions and effortlessness throughout to allow the judges to reward the skater with a higher grade of execution and therefore more points. But good to see him smiling, good to see he and the coach relishing what is an amazing opportunity, representing his country in his home city, his home training location of Ostrava. This course, please. Damian has earned in his short program 44.95 points. So way off his PB with 44.95, but still the top-ranked Czech skater in the short program. Next to skate, representing Malaysia, Zhejiang Fang, Malaysia. So the next skater, Zhejiang Fang, hasn't been able to compete for the past three years. His first competition since 2019.
A great fun in the choreography from Zhe Zhang Fang from Malaysia. And chatting to Zhe yesterday, he explained that throughout the pandemic, training time was virtually decimated. There would be periods of time where they could train and then long, prolonged periods where there was no ice available to them. And we can't really underestimate the impact that will have on these athletes at this development stage. But Jay said yesterday, just so happy to embrace this opportunity and the chance to, to compete on this stage. And he brings some great entertainment and fun, as you can see. First event in three years. And not holding back from the presentation at all. This stepping out of the triple toe combination. And as we saw from the previous skater, the Czech skater, comparatively easier technical content. But this was good. Took a long preparation, which isn't optimal for the judges. But landed maybe just a little under rotated there on that, the triple loop. But so much fun here in the performance. And this year, judges want to see choreography reflecting the musical form. And that there has to be that. Again, long preparation, very telegraphed entry into the double axle. But delighted to see his hands turn up, commanding an applause for the clean jump. So at his last series, last event on the Junior Grand Prix in Lake Placid back in 2019, he scored 31 points. And he's added six points to that with 37.47 for Zhe Zhang Feng. So 10 skaters have competed already in the men's short program with Nikolai Memola from Italy having a comfortable six-point lead. As we look now to an ice resurface. And here we're going to be treated again to some of the videos from the International Skating Union. For those that joined us in Courchevel in France last week, we will use the ice resurface time to showcase some of the wonderful elements explained videos that the ISU have created. But first, you'll see an insight into World Ice Skating Day, a new initiative by the International Skating Union for a day of celebration for our wonderful sport. It will take place on the 4th of December and we encourage all ages, abilities to embrace all forms of ice skating. And then we get to see one of the first of today's ISU Elements Explained videos where we'll see some footage from the Center of Excellence in Bangkok and chance to see some information on the camel spin, which we will see all of the men compete with today. And then our third and final video in this resurface, another, I, another of the ISU Elements Explained videos where Andre Hotrek will show information on this sit spin. So stay tuned to enjoy these fabulous insights into some of the elements in our sport. And we look forward to restarting with the next group of men in this men's short program.
So what Welcome everyone to the ISU Center of Excellence at the IWAS International Training Center in Bangkok, Thailand. Today we will be looking at the camel spin. Let's take a look at the camel position. The knee of the free leg should be higher than the hip with good turnout and toe pointed. Both legs should be completely straight. Your torso should be parallel to the ice with a slightly arched back. For a basic position, have your arms extended to the side. To work on your balance and a strong position, do a spiral down the ice, keeping your head straight forward and your core strong. When you're doing your wind up for the camel spin, make sure you look where you're going to step and step into the circle with a nice low torso. To practice keeping your weight over your skating leg, place your hand on your skating side hip during the entry and the spin. Thank you for joining us at the ISU Center of Excellence at the IWAS International Training Center in Bangkok, Thailand. Please stay tuned for more videos from the ISU. Sawadee Kap. Hello everybody and welcome to the ISU Center of Excellence in Bergamo, Italy. Today the topic is going to be sit spin. The definition of sit spin is any position in a spin where the upper part of the skating leg is at least parallel to the ice. First tip for the sit spin. Keep your arms out stretched for balance as you enter to the spin. The second tip for the entry is to keep your free leg really extended and make sure it makes all the circle around to go down to the spin and then watch for your balance. Okay, now let's combine the two moves. Stretch your arms, stretch your free leg and go. To improve the level of difficulty of your sit spin, there are three categories based on the position of the free leg in the sit spin. Sit forward. Sit sideways. Sit behind. Now let's take a look at all three positions in one spin. Thank you all for watching. I hope your sit spin will improve and see you next time for another tips from Centers of Excellence.
The next group of five men take to the ice for their warm-up. Ten men have already completed their short program with Italy's Nikolai Memola leading the field at this stage with 71.56 points. And that kind of score would have had Nikolai in second place in Courchevel last week, so indication that the field is strong here. And expectations are that some of the best skaters still to come with 11 more competitors yet to compete here in Ostrava. You can see the Wally jumps used as warm up and preparation for the skaters competing now. And in this group of five men, three of them haven't yet competed on the Junior Grand Prix circuit. And two of the five intend to compete with the triple axel. Which the top two competitors so far used in their short program. Thanks to those checking in with us online and sending in questions. We have questions coming in both on the International Skating Union's Junior Grand Prix YouTube channel and on the social media pages as well. And Jay Green has sent in the question, the Junior Grand Prix has a vast range of skaters at different points of development and of different ages. How does the variety within the field strengthen the development of all skaters, wherever they may be in their development? Well, I think you've totally ascertained exactly what the Junior Grand Prix is about, the development of the skaters, and in some cases, the development of the skating nations. Opportunity for some to represent skating nations less readily seen on the international figure skating circuit. And having chatted to some of the athletes who are here in Ostrava, many of them coming with very different desires and goals from this event. The skaters from Japan, like Nozuma Yoshioka on your screen now. His different sights and expectations in his event, I am sure, having seen his compatriot Shunsuk Nakamura win in Courchevel last week. His sights, I am sure, set towards trying to secure points for the Junior Grand Prix final, which will be held in Torino in mid-December. And yet, for some of the other athletes, being on the ice and sharing the ice with the likes of the Japanese team, that in itself is a huge, huge opportunity and reason itself for traveling across the world to compete here. There are a few things quite like training alongside a stronger skater. The process of osmosis, being around others that are superior to you has a huge developmental boost for the skaters. And indeed, competition, by its very nature, pushes the athletes to demand that little bit more from themselves. As we see, solid triple, it's triple toe. And I think that, for me, is one of the fascinating insights into this, the Junior Grand Prix, seeing the development, seeing the potential awareness increases for the youngsters of what is expected and achievable. Another question coming in on YouTube. Does the GOE, that's the grade of execution, make a difference between the score for the skater? So the grade of execution is decided by the judging panel. And as I said earlier, we have 27 different judges who have all come to Estrava from 20 different skating nations and they have been well-trained and well-versed in the criteria to give a positive or negative grade of execution. So to give you an insight into some of the bullet points for the grade of execution, 
Judges can give a higher grade of execution if they see... In a step sequence, deep edges, clean steps and turns and control of the whole body. If they think the element matches the music. And if they think that the element is effortless throughout with good energy flow and execution, they can go higher with the grade of execution. And the impact of that is a higher technical element score. So dependent upon the element, we can see a big boost in the score. So if we look at the step sequences, a step sequence that's awarded just a level one at base value gets 1.8 points. But if the judges think that that element is a plus five, the maximum grade of execution allowed, that can add an extra 0.9 to the score, turning the element into 2.7 marks. So the grade of execution will be applied to all of the elements and can have a huge impact on the skater scores. And that's what we'll see with some of the most experienced skaters that they'll be striving not just to cleanly deliver the element, but to deliver the element with the maximum grade of execution possible. And the next skater, a young 14-year-old, new to the Junior Grand Prix series, Fourteen-year-old Pablo Clement and his short program will start with his intended triple saco double tool combination.
So as we said on the warm-up, the Junior Grand Prix really represents opportunity for development. And that in itself, huge opportunity for development for Pablo Clement from Poland, skating to the music from the Sherlock Holmes soundtrack. And I think his costume worried him throughout and that put him off a little bit. And that in itself, just a learning experience which I doubt he will ever have to undergo again. I'm sure he'll always be mindful of that in the future as he analyzes with his coach what was happening. He looks like quite the character. And I am confident that following on from this next year, if we're lucky enough to see Pablo on the Junior Grand Prix again, he'll return with increased technical difficulty and better skating skills as well. Here, the triple circle just has to put the hand down, forcing a minus grade of execution. And then it's the mandatory loop jump. So, triple loop for Pablo. And then the wally jump into the intended double axle, and that's the real disaster for Pablo. So. A double axle is worth 3.3 points, but nothing available to Pablo with that. But here, some fun with musicality within the toe steps, body movement, this is all part of the step sequence. Trying to get his levels assigned to the step sequence. Multi, just rotation in both directions. All of these are features for the step sequence for Pablo and that Unfortunately, just came in at a level one. That's probably a result of the depth of the edges that were called clean by the technical panel. And good that he's reacting to the audience and smiling now too. for Pablo, but we look forward to seeing him improving on that in the free skate. Next skate, representing Austria, Daniel Ruiz. One of the youngest competitors here in Estrava, Daniel Ruiz, just 13 years of age.
I think a very well-rounded skater, good component scores, good technique, and quite the character on and off the ice. Just 13 years of age from Vienna. And interestingly, his planned program content had a double loop inserted, but he elected to go for the more difficult triple here. And that perhaps an executive decision by the team for his development to attempt something that is not yet as comfortable for him. Interpreting the landing of that double axle. And again, that projection and expression maintained through the jump combination. This was triple cycle with double toe. Late in the program, he went for this, the triple loop. Triple loop worth 4.9 points. But you can see there with the blade, just landing sideways, that won't receive that full base value. But I'm sure he's well aware that coming into this event, he's up against some of the best junior skaters in the world with incredible technical feats of ability. And so he wanted to consider himself in the mix. I think the strength of some of the aspects of Daniel skating will help keep him higher than others who have attempted more technical difficulty. Some real highlights within the step sequence, choosing to do a forward inside loop turn, electing to do some stuff that's more difficult Obviously, eager to push himself. Diane has earned in the short program 40.62 points. 40.62 points and into eighth place for Daniel Ruiz from Austria. On the ice, representing Slovenia, David Sede, Slovensko. 16-year-old Slovenian skater. Skating to music by Rag and Bone Man.
David Sede from Slovenia. The 16 year old competed in the World Junior Championships earlier this year in Tallinn, placing 32nd there. So, looking to be in a contention to qualify for the free skate if he's going to make the return to World Juniors this season. And elected to go for the easier double axel. And this all dependent upon how the skaters are training, what's consistent, what's looking worthy of being included within their program. This triple loops, triple toe. And then that a bracket turn as a difficult entry into the double axel. And you can see they're not looking as most comfortable on the landing. But great change of edge as one of the features used to up the level of the change set spin. You can see clear forward outside going from back inside to forward outside before the jump over to the back foot and a jump within the back spin and the back set. Looking solid there on the change set. That came in at level four with a good grade of execution as well. But this was problematic. And you can see the blade turning on the ice on landing. So it won't receive the full base value. David works with Luca Demat, a former Italian pair skater. And also Luca Lenotti, the former Italian World Ice Dance Champion. So he's got lots of good help in his team. As you see his transition out of the element. Personal best score of 45.48 from that World Junior Championships in March. David has earned in his short program 49.64 points and he's currently in fifth place. And creating a new ISU PB 49.64 for the Slovenian. On the ice, representing China, Dong Yi Tian, China. Another 14-year-old, Tong Yi Tian. He looked great in warm-up with the triple loops, triple toe loop, and that is his first planned element in the short program here.
and the perfect musicality for Tong Yi Tian from China at the end. This is cheered on by other members of the Chinese team here in Ostrava. This is greeted by his coach. He works with Vin Shu Zhu, who was the 2004 and 2006 Chinese national champion. And just really good start. Showcasing good performance skill and good presentation. But this was so good in warm up. But there. Triple loops without the combination, so he loses a triple toe is worth 4.2 points. So losing that and the negative rate of execution on the loops is tricky. But comes back with the double three turns into the triple loop, which looks relatively effortless. And here, the mandatory flying camel spin that all the men must compete. You can see Tong Yi working through different camel features. The slight bend in his standing leg, just indication that he's a little tight in his hamstring still. Can't quite lock out the positions to make the best aesthetic shape. But that's still come in at level four. And that perfectly punctuated musically at the end of that as well. Mohawk change edge, back counter, akin to the great Yuzuru Hanyu who used that so successfully as his entry into his axle. Just a double for Tong Yi here. But rest assured, he'll be working hard on that in the training ground to make sure it's a triple for the future. Only 14 years old, and he's presented himself incredibly well here, both in practice and in competition. But I'm pretty sure tomorrow he'll be looking forward to rectifying that mistake in the jump combination and showcasing triple triples in the free skate as well. This course, please. Tong Yi has earned in his short program 59.12 points. So despite the mistake, still close to 60 with 59.12 for China's Tong Yi Tian. On the ice, representing Japan, Nozomu Yoshioka, Yakamisko. So, 18-year-old Nozomu Yoshioka skating to Malaguena.
Well, beautiful triple axel. Open the short program for Nozomu Yoshioka. He delivers a short program performance that definitely puts him in contention to follow the likes of Shunsuke Nakamura, who won the first Junior Grand Prix event last week in Courchevel. Japanese men first and third in France at the first Junior Grand Prix. And Nozomu making a strong bid to lead here as well. Nikolai Mamola leads at this stage with 71.56. He had a mistake on his triple axel, and we'll see shortly. Fabulous quality on the grid of execution for the triple axel. Good speed going in, very good height, good length, and great flow out on the landing. Here, this triple axel was huge. Not the same level of length. On the second part of the combination, ideally judges looking to see very good very good length in both parts. And this an invisible mistake, just double three turns out of the landing of the triple loop. Falling leaf transitions. Two of Nazomu's spins coming in at level four, the flying camel spin. I only saw features for level three, so I'm sure they're conscious that they came into that event without the maximum level possible. And Nozomu, I'm sure, will be working hard on achieving another feature within his flying camel spin just to add some extra points to the total score. Nozomu won the junior men at the Gensin Summer Cup mid-August, and he landed two triple axles and a quad toe in his free skate there, so lots of technical proficiency. Just to give an indication of the depth of the field in Japan, Nozomi was 20th in the senior men's event, such as an indication of how many good strong skaters there are there. 72.03 for Nozomu puts him into first place. The following skaters may now take the ice for their warm up. From the United States of America, Maxime Zappel. The final group of men take to the ice. This group will have six competitors in it. 21 men in total competing here on Estrava. And this final group looks to be one of the strongest based on the planned program contents. Three triple axles intended in this group. Thanks again to those sending in questions on the International Skating Union's social media and YouTube channels. Requests coming in. Wow. From Anson, 24 times seven. Difference between the technical and the presentation points. How is the presentation point calculated? So this year, following the end of the last Olympic cycle, the International Skating Union has decided to tweak the second mark. And now instead of five program component scores, the judges award three program component scores. The first being the composition mark, and then second, the presentation mark, and finally, the skating skills component score. And previously, the skating skills were ascertained first of the five different components. Now they are the final inputted score by the judges And this Component scores, judges looking for various different criteria. Ted Barton was 
wonderfully articulating that previously the judges had 27 different criteria to ascertain before giving out the component scores. Now, those criteria down to 14, so less for the judges to consider in the small amount of allocated time given to them before deciding the skater's presentation mark. And they're looking for, in the skating skills, flow, power, speed, balance, and glide. Those are the fundamentals which create good skating skills. And that we've seen from the likes of Nikolai Mamola, who's in second place at the moment from Italy. And then in the composition score, judges looking for connection between and within the elements. So that, akin to what was last year, the transition component. So we'll see many of the skaters using highlight movement and difficult steps between the elements. And judges also looking for choreography. They're reflecting the musical phrase and form. So trying to really reward skaters for increased musicality. And that arguably is something that has helped create fans of skaters around the world. So often those that are most musically mindful in their choreography get remembered. The technical element score comprises the seven elements in the short program. So the men competing here all have to attempt a double or triple axle. And that technical element score will be shaped largely by how difficult their planned program content is. So a double axle worth 3.3 points at base value, a triple axle worth a whopping eight points. And it's a triple axle, which you see on your screen now, and which was also used by Nozomu Yoshioka and Nikolai Mamola to help them rank first and second at this stage in the competition. Skaters also have three spin elements to do in their short program. And the men having to do a flying camel spin, which sometimes, as a generalization, causes challenges for the men. Generally, not as flexible as the women competing and therefore struggling sometimes with the difficult features that can be used to gain the level four. So three jump elements, three spin elements, and a step sequence required in the short program. And like the spins, the step sequence will be given a level by the technical panel. And some slight changes to the level features this season. Again, the International Skating Union and the technical panels involved in the decision making of the criteria for our sport. Changing things up slightly this year. Requesting the skaters when they work the clusters of turns, the difficult combinations of three turns, making the criteria slightly more difficult this year to get that level feature called. And that's the criteria that the skaters, the coaches and the choreographers will have all worked towards following the new rules being released. And arguably the biggest difference this season being in some of the spin features with different features becoming mandatory and you'll see that the skaters all having to do new spin features from last season and really being pushed to work on different positions. Gentlemen, your warm up has ended. Please leave the ice. So, five of the skaters now leave the ice, leaving this wonderful venue to Maxim Zarkov. The first of two male skaters representing the United States of America. On the ice, representing the United States of America, Maxim Zarkov. <laughs> And as with last week in Courchevel in France, the American team offering great support to Maxim Zarkov, skating to music by Pink Floyd.
Clean skate for Maxim Zarkov from the United States of America. United States of America. And a huge triple axel putting him right in contention for top spot here in Ostrava. Taught by his father, Andrei Zarkov. A real fascinating character on the men's circuit. He has his own clothing brand. And amazing that he can devote his time to both training and cultivating some of his <laughs> business ventures. Started skating at just two years old. And here, that brilliant triple axel with so much length as well as height. Triple loops, triple toe. Good outside edge on takeoff. Loads of elevation. You might just catch a little bit of rotation done on the ice for the second part of that jump combination. A bit short on the back edge, but better grade of execution delivered, I'm sure, for this triple loop late in the program. And here you can see it slow mo at the look at the change of edge. So difficult to do. Got to try to maintain that free leg position in the camel spin position. Whilst changing edge. And wonderful music by Pink Floyd. As you see the cross foot spin where toes have to touch. Japan's Nozomu Yoshioka leads at this stage with 72.03. How close will Maxim be? His current personal best from Kurshevel last year, 60.45 on the ISU rankings. Maxim Zarkov has earned in his short program 71.04. And he looks satisfied with that. 71.04 into third place. Back-to-back -back American skaters. And this time, last year's American junior champion, Kai Kovar.
Dynamic finish for Kai Kovar from America. Kai Kovar, United States of America. And this 16 year old fought really hard on the opening two elements, showcasing how well trained he must be coming into this event. And he will be delighted, I am sure. He too, like his compatriot, taught by his parents. And the whole family, I'm sure, totally committed to success here on the ISU Junior Grand Prix stage. There's the opening triple axle. Looked off axis in the air, slight inside edge on the landing. But fought well to still get a positive GOE and grade of execution on that element. This triple loops, triple toe. Good edge on takeoff. And again, slightly off axis. A little high on the toe pick on the landing. But nevertheless, cleanly done. A lot of preparation for the triple loop. However, it was perfectly timed with the music and that one of the grade of execution bullet points for the judges too. You can see here, there's the rocker deep edges, changing edge there as he steps through into what was really good speed on the combination spin and the camel. Hard to maintain the same level of speed in camel as it is to the sit spin, but did that well throughout this change of edge. And also on the sit forwards feature. Have to acknowledge also the musicality within the step sequence and there at the end too, punctuating the music with lots of highlights. So we've seen some great skates so far. In the men's short program, lots of clean performances. It'll be interesting to see how the judges ranked Kai Kovar, not only in comparison to his compatriot Maxim Zarkov, who's currently in third, but the leader Nozomu Yoshioka. Kai Kovar has earned in the short program a total of 69.11 points and he is currently in fourth place. Into fourth for Kai Kovar from America. Next on the ice, representing Hungary, Alexandra Vlasenko, Magasko. The 18-year-old from Hungary skates to Envy d'Amour.
Alexander Vlasenko from Hungary. Such a shame with the jump combination, the fall on the second part of that combination. He fought so hard to go for the triple toe at the end of the triple loops as opposed to opting for the easier double. And unfortunately, the gamble didn't pay off. You can see working the expression, multi-directional skating, working both directions at the start of the program as he prepared now for the triple axel. Big skid on takeoff. And manages to find the back outside edge. You can see good height. Just a little far back then. Elected now to go for a triple toe as part of the combination. But the lack of optimal landing on the loops just made that too tough. Here, outside spread eagle. And now into the mandatory loop jump. And you can see some of the rotation there done on the ice. In addition to the hand going down, so the grade of execution for that will be lower than he wanted. Alexander, one of the skaters who competes both on the junior circuit and the senior circuit, having competed at both the Worlds in Montpellier and the Junior Worlds in Tallinn. And there you see Yulia Sebastian, his coach, former European champion from Hungary with one of the biggest triple loops jumps I've ever seen. <laughs> so Yulia competed on the senior circuit. I think she did 12 oh, world championships, so she has a wealth of experience to help her student with in preparing mentally for the free skate. Has in short program, a total of 57.08 and into ninth place for Hungarian Alexander Vlasenko. And now, on the ice, representing Germany, Luca Fuenfer. Luca Fuenfer, who will be skating to an incredibly good music choice, Gangster's Paradise by Coolio.
Such a shame for Luca Fuenfer from Germany. I was hoping you would all get to enjoy the great choreography to brilliant music. Brave choice to use something that's not commonly used within competitive figure skating, Gangsta's Paradise. And in practice, he did it really, really well. Loads of conviction to his choreography by Adam Solia. But unfortunately, the technical mistakes weighing too heavy on his mind, understandably. And that single loop jump, which will get him no value at all, will be really costly for his total score. You can see here in the opening movements, conviction. Rotation cleanly done, but just too far forward in his toe pick to keep a running edge to satisfy the jump combination. Nice chuck to change edge, loads of speed, flow, glide, all good aspects to this, the double axle. Nice extension on the landing position as he changed edge. And I thought this was brilliant. The change sit spin, there the change of edge. And as he does these different features, he manages to maintain the center of the spin And this to sit behind, you can see the blade doesn't deviate from its spot. Luca had Junior Grand Prix experiences last year and knew what to expect, but this just really costly for him. Was intending triple loop, but pops that jump into single which will have big implications on the score. And this in practice was brilliant. The choreography within a step sequence, but you could see here, not only had the triple loop gone awry, but just a little tight. And we can't underestimate the relative enormity of the occasion for these athletes. They'll have worked so hard through the off season to prepare themselves for the Junior Grand Prix and the pressure inevitable upon their shoulders. And uh, coaches and team work hard to mentally motivate him for the free skate. Luca has earned a short program a total of 44.92 points. And he is currently... 44.92 for Luca from Germany. So a warm cheer for another 13-year-old Ming Kyu So, who will have been buoyed by his compatriot Yong Hyun Cha from Korea, who was second in the first Grand Prix in Courchevel last week. Skating to You Are My Destiny by Paul Anka.
And Min Kyu Seo from Korea rightly punches the air after an excellent skate in his short program. Each of the seven elements cleanly performed with good grades of execution. And last week, we saw relative veteran from Korea, Yong Hyun Cha, finally secure a medal on the Junior Grand Prix circuit. But the future looks bright with this youngster, only 13 years old. And he looking like he is very capable of taking over Korean men's skating in the future. Triple flip, close to the boards, but clean on the triple toe loop. And good flow, good speed as he enters into the triple loop. And transitions out of that with double three turns. And here as we look at the step sequence, you can see good use of edge. I think there's the body movement, potentially considering trying to get the level four as well. Deep changes of edge, bracket, counter and loop, one of his clusters of turns. And here, later in the program, still lots of speed and ice coverage and the wondrous flow and glide. So making it really easy for the judges. And he deserves to punch the air. Well done, great job. He won South Korea's Junior Grand Prix selection competition, beating Yong Hyun Cha at that event. So I'm sure the Korean Federation, very conscious of the talent of this youngster. The scores, please. Ming Hyo So has earned in the short program a total of 74. Wow, fantastic score. No triple axel, but that doesn't prevent him from leading it comfortably with 74.39 points from Minkyu Seo. Last escape representing Sweden, Andreas Nordenberg. The final skater in the men's short program here in Ostrava. Skating to Hurt by Johnny Cash, Andreas Nordback from Sweden.
brilliant performance from Andreas Nordback from Sweden. What a wonderful way to finish the men's short program here. Andreas Nordback. Min Kyushu from Korea leapt into first place, but this definitely in contention with that. And a fabulously different choice from the young Korean using Hurt by Johnny Cash, an excellent choreography too from Benoit Richaud. And real great advert for the sport, such different approaches from the final two competitors in this men's short program. And you can see intensity and conviction to the choreography as well as the seven elements. And Andreas showcasing flow and glide that will facilitate the judges high skating skill score there the opening triple axel little tight but obviously that carries a higher technical base value than the korean leader at present but delighted to see him there on the jump combo and this was excellent the butterfly entry and maintaining speed in the difficult spin positions within the flying camel and you can see in background is coach counting every rotation with him as he preps for the triple loop after the Ina Bauer. And that was excellent. And here you can see, again, that flow and glide, just covering the ice seemingly effortlessly through the difficult turns within the step sequence and showcasing original and unique body movement that his choreographer Benoit Richaud is renowned for too. He was top 10 at Junior World Championships, so comes into this event with some pedigree. And perhaps expecting to contend for the title here. Seventy-four point three nine leads with seventy-two point zero three in the silver medal position at the moment from Japan's Nozomo Yoshioka. So Andreas Norback slots in just two hundredths of a point behind Japan's Nozomu Yoshioka to finish in third place. It's been a brilliant men's short program and lots of excellent skates from the 21 men who were competing. Next up, we will see the start of the pairs campaign in the Junior Grand Prix series. And we look forward to seeing the eight entrants from seven different skating nation nations coming up in the pairs event. Join us shortly for some more great skating from the Ostravar Arena in Ostrava in the Czech Republic. <laughs> 